This is Regin's Travels Podcast. Welcome once again to another episode of Regin's Travels Podcast. My name is Regin Reino. We are joined today by Kai Abbas, a fitness and life coach, a Spartan race elite athlete, and a former travel blogger. She aims to help create healthier patterns so people can live their best life. Hello, Kai. Welcome to the show. Hello, Regine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so, so happy to be here. And I'm actually really, I feel honored to, to, to get invited in your podcast. Yeah, I remember before you were active in travel blogging, that's where I got to know you on on Facebook because we had a group, Pinoy Travel yeah. Blogger. Yeah. And I remember your blog, that was like, is it called Pink Chinela? Something like that. Yes, it was. It was Pink Chinela. So a long time ago, like when we started blogging in the Philippines, we were there as a first bloggers in 20, 2004, I guess. Oh, wow. And then the community grew. And my blogging was just really about personal stuff. And, you know, at the time, yung mga tao, they follow each other because they're just chismosa. <laughs> and we want to know what's going on with each other. And then eventually, it grew into something bigger. And, um, yeah, I, I went into, what do you call this, um, trouble blogging sometime 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. And it was so amazing to be part of the... Pinoy travel bloggers and these are amazing travel bloggers who were first in the field of you know travel blogging in the Philippines so yeah that's really an amazing experience wow 2008 so you're kind of like the pioneer in the Philippines if it it was 2008 or probably second wave something like that yeah yeah sort of sort of and now you're a life coach, you're a fitness coach, you're doing Spartan races. That's really amazing. And I think you're living your best life. You're posting on Instagram, you're inspiring a lot of people. And you radiate this positivity, you know. So how did this all start, you're, you being a fitness and life coach? Yeah, it's actually a very, very long journey, something that I didn't realize on the onset. So I started like, I'm always active, even when I was in college, I would do runs and kickboxing and and walking and running and things like that. So I'm always active. So when I started to work in corporate, I got more money. (laughs) So I'm able to fund more activities like going to the gym, hiring my own personal coach and doing more activities really like surfing, rock climbing, CrossFit because I'm able to do it. So it was just in my blood, I guess. I'm just like that active person. And then um, I was in corporate for a very long time. 12 years and it sent me into a I could say like a negative space and I got really depressed and maybe because corporate is just like it was too much for me and I decided to quit corporate and I started to run Spartan Race and at that time I realized I can do this I like I can do this for a living because this is something that I really want to do I can help more people become healthier and, you know, fall in love with their lives again in terms of nutrition and fitness and movement and activities that they could enjoy. And so that started that um, the journey of becoming a fitness coach. And in 2020, of course, we experienced the pandemic. It hit us hard. Personally, for me, I was also in a rough place at the time and I had to do a lot of therapy and a lot of inner work to deal with everything with my emotional state with everything that's going on and then (laughs) I decided that hey because I've I've done so much progress with myself with my self-development and growth maybe I can do this again. Like maybe I can help people in that area. And so I took on like certifications for life coaching and that's how I became a, yeah, life coach. (laughs) This is a long, long, long journey. 
so let's go back to your life in your when you were at the corporate world because you've mentioned that you weren't happy you did it for 12 years but you weren't happy and not just you a lot of stories a lot of stories i've heard that they quit corporate because they they weren't happy they were so sickly during that time i remember even one travel vlogger his name is what was his name again his channel's name is los leblanc uh, the christian leblanc i guess his name he also yeah. quit corporate world and he said prior to being a vlogger traveling the world he was kind of stuck in that nine to five and he was kind of like depressed and always being sick so i'm wondering what it is about corporate world that it's like nowadays a lot of people are kind of like preaching to quit corporate world to be brave and just go out there and take the plunge so in your in your experience what it is what it is about corporate world that made you depressed so because that's really heavy right like depressed yeah. so first i want to say that maybe it's not the corporate world maybe it's just this people aren't fit for that world like there are, i know people who thrive in that setting they're fine they're good yeah yeah climbing up that ladder they're they're okay but if you're not in alignment with that, you don't belong there. Like for myself, for example, when I started corporate, it was because the expectation was for me to go to corporate. So I finished um, computer science and UP. I took up my master's degree and all those things. And I was brought up like, you know, study hard, do all these things, become an achiever and then join a big company and make your way up to the top and things like that they define success in that way when we were kids and even this the education system like they will ask you what do you want to become when you grow up like want to be a doctor want to be a computer scientist or what want to be like this 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 so it's all like con preconditioned and so we follow that path believing that success is in the corporate world when you achieve 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 but sometimes when we get there we feel lost when it's not in alignment with who we truly are because some people they, it's it's just them it's just them like i can't sit in a cubicle or in a desk for nine to five i, I mean you also quit your job right so it's just that it's not in alignment with me so it's just people being in a situation that they're not meant to be in the first place so it's not really being the corporate as like the you know the what they call this the contra vida in the story because pe some people will thrive in corporate it's right, just right. that some people would would rather do something else and that's totally totally okay so i i can relate with the person that you're talking about like when i quit six months before i quit corporate i was always sick like sick in the er confined sometimes type of sick and they couldn't wow. figure out what's wrong with me and the doctors would just say this is stress and loose your immune system is compromised because you're always stressed. And then I figure out, this is not worth it. I'm earning a lot of money. I don't care if like my mental health was at risk. My physical body is at risk. Like, I don't care about the money. I don't care about the, the, the position because at the time I was like 30, I think I was 29. And I was holding a really good position, a high position in the company. I don't care about it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to die here, so I had to quit. I had to take care of myself first. So. Yeah, it's interesting because when we were young, we, we used to think that as long as the money is there, as long as the certain amount of money we receive, that will do it, that will make us happy. But then they would come to a point where we realize that it's not all about the money. It's not yeah. just, I mean, money is important, of course, to pay bills, but it's not just about the money because I've experienced that as well. Like I've reached this amount of money anymore. And then I was like, 
uh, I would really, not really quit, but would really want to go to another job because that is more fulfilling to me, even if the salary is lower than my current job. So then you realize that it's just not about the money. And it's, I'm, and it's interesting that you've mentioned it's not about the corporate world because like what you've said, some people thrive in the corporate world and I've seen those as well. And because people might interpret that as if you want to be successful and happy in life, it's just you have to be an entrepreneur. You have to quit corporate world. That's it. So yeah. it's good that you've mentioned that, well, some people love the corporate world. Some people love the structure, the routine, and the stability and the security. But if it is not for you, if you feel that it's not working for you, then you have to take the plunge and quit it. Because a lot of people nowadays, I think, they're not happy with their current situation, but they're they're so scared to take the plunge. And I think that's what you did. You weren't scared. You had the courage to quit your stable job, a high paying job in Manila. So how was it during the first years of quitting your job? What were the challenges? Because a lot of people are preaching, oh, I quit my job. I had a freedom and you were traveling Southeast Asia. You were doing uh, consultancy, consultancy projects regarding computers and all that stuff, going to the beach during your free time. And people see that on the internet, on social media. A lot of people are preaching, oh, this is this is the life. But behind those scenes, you know, we, we don't know the struggles and the challenges. So how about you? What were the struggles? Yeah. A lot. So when I quit this big corporate corporation in 2017, I decided that I'm just going to take on consultancy job, but it's still IT related and that allowed me to travel because it was still good money. So it was not um, corporate, it was a startup and doing job for startups and like creating structures for them and things like that. So I still had a lot of money plus freedom. Okay, but then in 2019, two years after that, I quit IT like IT altogether. Like, no, I'm not gonna do IT anymore because it started to feel like everyone I work with is someone I know in the past corporate job and things like that. It's a really, really small world. And maybe, maybe the past 10 years, I was in love with computer science. I was in love with IT. I was in love with machine language and artificial intelligence. That's, I, I'm a nerd. Like, I was in love with it. But then now it's not the same thing anymore. So I don't have to stay doing that if I don't feel the fire anymore. Like it's like kind of like a relationship, right? So I've grown my passion for for computer science and machine intelligence. And so I moved on to other things. And this is where the struggle started because I am starting from scratch. So I transferred from IT to fitness industry. That is a long, huge, big leap, like big, 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 huge step. So I knew that I wouldn't be able to make the same amount of money I'm creating. I was able to do it with um, IT when I try when I transfer to fitness and also I'm going to have to study first and create, you know, take on certifications and like really build from scratch. So this is the struggle because I had to start from scratch and I had to let go of a lot of things so that I can create a new one, I can create better life for me. I have my car, my expensive life, I have a really, really expensive lifestyle back then. And for and and we mentioned about money, right? So I really do hope everyone gets a lot of money. Like everyone becomes wealthy. And also for them to realize that it's not just about being wealthy or not just about the money. <laughs> because I heard stories or, or I will hear people talk to me or tell me, yeah, that's easy for you to say because you came from a wealthy family or because you have money to all do, to do all these things. And I'm telling them, no, 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 no. You don't know anything about me. First, I didn't come from a wealthy family. I was able to go through my education through college because of scholarships. I'm a bright kid. So it's not about money. I I am the breadwinner. I take care of my mom and all those things. So no, 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 no. It's not because I have money. It was because I wanted to create something different for myself, something that I would really, really be inspired to follow 
and also inspire other people to take on that mm. that, that type of path as well. Mm-hmm. So most people would tell you, okay, go go after your dreams, go for it, and things like that. But what they don't tell you is like, <laughs> you need to be brave. <laughs> you need to have a really, really thick skin and, you know, a really, really strong stomach because it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be struggles and it's going to make you question why am I here again? Why am I doing this again? I'm comfortable in corporate. I'm comfortable with my old job. Why am I doing this again? Is this the right decision? Every single day, you are going, you're going to have that. But then for you to succeed, for you to be able to stay on track towards your dream, you got to look at the long game. The long game is on my deathbed, is, it, is this going to matter? Is this how I'm going to spend the rest of my life? What is this thing that I'm chasing that is going to make me, you know, so proud of myself the moment that I reach the time when I'm about to die, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's, it's kind of existential in a way, but then that's it. I, that That really is it. Like, what is this thing that you will not regret that you did in your life, right? Wow. So for most people, we think of the present of what we're doing now, but your perspective was you're thinking of the long run, like at my deathbed, what have I accomplished? Wow, that's really deep. But then in 2017, you when you were traveling all over Southeast Asia doing doing this consultancy job how was it because i feel like like you're living the dream for me that is that is the dream to be a location independent at the same time earning money so how was it like doing that in 2017 it it was a dream it was 100 percent the dream i would wake up on the beach and i would go rock climbing by the beach and i would just go swim or do go surfing and just like yeah it was yeah money allowed me to do all of that but then the work that i was doing wasn't giving me the fulfillment that i think i was looking for at the time so even though i am not in corporate even though i have my own thing going i have the freedom i have the money but the thing is i don't have the fulfillment because there's no purpose to what i do every single day Mm. and for me, okay. that is super, super um, important to find purpose in your life. So you're not just going through this for yourself. I don't want to just live my life for myself, experiencing freedom and happiness and joy and living the life just for myself, because I don't really believe um, on that. I really believe that we are all here for the greater good. So I wasn't feeling that. Even though I'm location independent, I have my own thing. I wasn't feeling that fulfillment. So I had to quit IT. And that's when I shifted into uh, fitness. So how was the income during that time? Was it enough or was it good as well during the 2017? Yeah, uh... Yeah, the 2017 was really good money because it's IT. It's IT work. It's always good money in IT. Right, (laughs) right. right. So So it was good. So th- that is my point. It's like you're making good money, you're location independent, you're traveling all over Southeast Asia. Sometimes you're on the beach, on your at your computer doing work with a wonderful view of the sunset, drinking coffee or hot chocolate. But then you, you're still not fulfilled. And I think it boils down to finding like what you've mentioned, purpose. And at the same time, I think it's also meaning because a lot of times we are kind of like programmed to chase happiness. It's like, this, this is what makes me happy. What, what are the things that will make me happy? We have to chase happiness. But there's like a research I've read before that happiness should be a byproduct of a meaningful life. So if you're living a meaningful life, whatever that is, that, whatever that, that is that gives you meaning, and most of it is contributing to others, or uh, contribution to the society, the community, having an impact, then that's meaningful, right? So happiness would just come naturally 
because of that. So I think what we're doing, the mistake of what we're doing nowadays is we, we go for happiness directly, but then we don't realize that that is just a byproduct. So, so I think we have to, to chase or to pursue meaning instead of happiness. Like citing your example, you've had everything, travel, and, and this, is what, this is what happens, you know, like sometimes we think, oh, I need to travel to make, so that I'll be happy, right? And I agree with that, but to a certain point, because I've, I know a lot of long-term travelers who are depressed because of traveling too much, especially these, you know, travel vloggers, sometimes they will confess. Oh, there was one episode I talked to a, to a guy who traveled like, in a year who was always traveling and he confessed he was depressed because of doing that. So sometimes we think of this freedom and independence, this will make us happy, but we need to check out ourselves as well. We need to, to balance it out because sometimes instead of having freedom, sometimes it becomes hedonism, which is not good at all. So that's really a very good lesson based on what you've experienced. Yeah, definitely. And you know, um, you mentioned about being depressed during traveling. I've experienced that. <laughs> I've experienced that <laughs> in 2011. Wow, 10 years ago, I was, um, I got my heart broken. Oh, <laughs> and I then I decided that I'm just going to do backpacking in Southeast Asia for like two months, I guess. Um, I was just going around and I'm on my own. And I was so sad and I got even more depressed that when I returned here in Manila, I was like, like zero, nothing depleted. My energy is like, I was like in a really, really um, bad place. So if we are traveling, we gotta be, I think we got, we, we need to find, you know, and we need to be clear on the purpose of our travel. Why are we traveling anyway? Right? I agree. So I agree. In 2018, when I started racing, I was traveling to race. So I'm going through all these different countries because I wanted to race. I'll stay there for a while, but I'm traveling to race. So right. I'm traveling for leisure or I'm traveling for work. We've got to be clear on what we, what we're, we are what we are accomplishing in our travels. And we're not just there seeing things and experiencing, but what is it? What about it? What about your travel that makes it exciting, that makes you so happy, that brings you purpose? And what are you just giving out to, to, to the community as well when you travel, right? So being clear on this gets you in alignment with yourself on your purpose, like maybe I'm traveling because I want to create a podcast that would inspire people and educate people about what's happening in certain parts of the world and what we can do about it and things like that. Maybe I'm traveling because I want to inspire entrepreneurs or young people that this can be done, that you can travel and have work and be your own, uh, own boss and make money and things like that. And then when you get alignment, it makes your travel even more meaningful because you're not doing you for your own happiness, but there's purpose to it bigger than you. Like it's it's meant for something bigger. Yeah, I completely agree. Especially when you've mentioned backpacking. I remember when I was still living in Southeast Asia. I was in I was based in Thailand. So I would regularly travel all over Southeast Asia as well during vacation. And I've seen the lifestyle of backpackers, like a typical backpacker, young people backpacking. And you can really see that, you know, not all, but mostly like a typical backpacker is living a, it's like borderline hedonism. Like there's no control. It's, it's, it's pleasure seeking activities. And I'm not surprised when after that trip, it's you're going to be depleted. Imagine an example of it is like partying every single day, sleeping late at night, not taking care of your health, eating crap, you know, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a life that you want to experience. It, it's also good to experience. But if you always do that in the long run, then it's not going to make you happy. And I really like what you've mentioned when you said you need to be 
purposeful in your travel. So if there's a purpose, the discipline is still there, it becomes more meaningful. I think what makes us happy is not just travel, but meaningful travel. Because I've experienced this as well when I travel travel around the world, I make it a point that I would be very purposeful. So I did it to broaden my knowledge, for me to experience history. And during the first half, I was so disciplined. I would make it a point to wake up five o'clock every day to watch the sunrise. I had a purpose. I have to to really immerse myself in the culture and history. But then the second part of my journey, I became lax. I slept late. I woke up late. I had no purpose. I was just I was just seeking pleasure, you know, eating whatever I want. Then I found out that the first half where I was more disciplined, I felt happier compared to the second half of my journey where I just kind of like drifted. So that's a very good lesson to all of us regarding travel. So I, I'm just glad that you've mentioned purposeful and meaningful travel. And then one of the reasons you went into the because you're you're doing you were doing Spartan races, and I think that's really admirable. I'm I have friends who did Spartan races in Beijing as well, and I, I always admire these athletes. You know, especially as I'm so interested in the actual Spartan, like the, the real actual Spartan in history. Like I think they are the bravest people around. Like the toughness of these people, and you are doing it, like, and I, that's really admirable. And <laughs> the reason why you 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 went into this sport or activities because of a breakup. So I think <laughs> if you think about, it, you know, no one wants these kinds of experiences, you know, it's sad and, and depressing. But at the same time, if you think about it, out of these sad experiences, something good can happen. Like if you yeah. think about the, of the movie or the book, Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert just had a terrible divorce. And because of that, the book, Eat, Pray, Love, and the movie was created so it, it, it not my it might not be a happy experience but out of these experiences something good can happen in your case you went into spartan and in, and until yeah. now you're still doing it so so can you can you tell us about it, that experience of the, the breakup and then finally yeah. finding mm -hmm. that spartan activity yeah that is actually a, a really really good story to tell because that started my journey into becoming a, a health coach, a life coach, right? So in 2018, I ran my first Spartan race. It was June 2018, and I signed up for it like four weeks before. I had no idea what it is. I just saw it on um, a Facebook ad, and it's like, okay, maybe I can do this. It's five kilometer run, and some obstacles. What's what's difficult, right? So I'm like, okay. Five five kilometer is just thirty minutes of running, and I can do I can lift weights because I was doing CrossFit and things like that. And um, yeah, I went on my first race and I signed up for the elite wave. So this is the competitive wave with all this amazing, wonderful elite women, and I just found myself there because I didn't know it was a competitive wave. And then I asked them, um, is there a way for beginners? Because I'm a beginner, this is my first, and they're like, yeah, but it's going to be at around 10 a.m. And the elite wave is like 7. And I asked, is it the same race with same obstacles? Just the same. So I'm like, I have nothing to do. It's OK. I'm going to do it. So I run in the elite wave. My first um, Spartan sprint took me two and a half hours to finish. It's five kilometers and then 30, 20 plus obstacles. Two and a half hours. So at that point, I felt like, ooh, this is something that I can do. This is so exciting. This is like overcoming obstacles and things like that. And like just being on my by myself, running the course, the entire course, it allowed me to I guess reflect on my life and it was it was it was crazy it's a crazy 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 race um I got cramps twice I puke after the race like I threw up I was so sick the day after and then I said that I want to run the next race and I want to do better and so the next race was like six weeks after and I started to train for it it's in um Malaysia and then after that, I got an, 
an email from Spartan Race PH telling me that I was like within the top 10 in the region. So I was like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? I didn't know. So little did I know I was running the elite wave in a series of competitions. And when you run those waves, you accumulate points. And so my first year of racing with zero experience, I was in the top 10 of Southeast Asia. And then it started June to September, and then I was in top 10. And then by December, I ran the APAC championship in Malaysia, and I was top five. And it was so, so crazy because I've never been athletic in my entire life. Yes, I've, I'm always active, but I'm not the athletic competitive type. Like I remember when I was young in high school, I would just pass out because I was so skinny. I'm always sick. I am that like, you know, frail kid. So like fast forward to 20 years and finding myself to be alongside all this elite athlete in Southeast Asia, it sparked a newfound confidence, I guess, in myself that I'm finding this thing that I didn't know was with me. And I wouldn't have found it if I didn't try new things. I just tried Spartan Race and I found this and then I w apparently I was good at it. And so that's how I decided that I want to be a Spartan coach. I want to be a Spartan coach. And that is actually my first certification in fitness. I took the Spartan coach certification in December. It was just four or five months after my first race. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I started and I became like, one of the top in Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific. And I started to coach really competitive women and they started to do podium finishes and like really up leveling their game. And that brought so much fulfillment within me because I'm doing the thing that I love. Plus I'm encouraging people to join me in that journey that they're finding strength and happiness and purpose in what they do as well. So yeah, that's 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 my Spartan story. <laughs> so how did it help? How did it help you during that time when you were when you're suffering from the breakup? Do you think it had an effect in you in terms um, of moving on or something like that? Yeah, I, I guess so because I, I I didn't mind. I wasn't even thinking about it anymore. Like after the first days, I'm like, I'm over it. Like, you know what? This is my <laughs> new life now. I'm over it. Like I'm I'm very quick to to move on from things once I understand that it's not for me. You know? So most people find themselves in really devastating state, like a breakup or losing a job or, you know um losing friends right because they wouldn't accept that it's not for them here's the thing That's do a good you one. want something that is not meant for you exactly exactly that is meant for someone else exactly no i don't want that like right. that is how i can overcome things really quickly because uh, it's not for me and i don't want things that is not for me so. that's so a really good mindset started, yeah, it does. So when I spot, I found Spartan Race, I knew it was something that I will be doing for a very long time. And I'm going for it, all in. That's a really good mindset because if you want something beautiful, everything, it's not just it's not just your love life, you know, including love life, of course, but if you want something beautiful, you have to you have to allow it to to happen naturally that's what i've realized as well some people force things to happen and it would not end up good you know think about think about relationship for example some people force like okay i, have, I want this girl i have to pursue and obviously sometimes it, it doesn't work but you have to you have to force sometimes people force things and the ending is not always good so that's a really good point that you've mentioned and it reminded me as well of David Goggins when you've mentioned that you were in that, let's say, depressive or dark place. And then you went into fitness like Spartan is extreme, extreme. Fit. Imagine you were doing CrossFit, but you still finish in two hours, like a normally 30 minute race, <laughs> despite of yeah. you being in CrossFit. So it, it reminded me of David Goggins, if you know him, he is a, he is a very inspiring individual as well. He used to be a Navy SEAL 
But before that, he was overweight. He was so depressed. He had a very traumatic childhood, and he was he was、uh, working at restaurants, killing bugs, that kind of life. And he had no discipline. After work, he would go to Seven Eleven to buy a box of donuts, and he was overweight, and he was so insecure. And he, yeah, he he went to the gym to lift weights, but that is like to cover his insecurities. But then he saw this show on TV about Navy SEAL, so he decided to join the Navy SEAL and went into fitness. And now he's considered the toughest man in the planet. And because of that, it was really a, like a life-changing experience. So if you think about it, fitness really, really impacts a person in a very in in a major way, in a big way. Like like what what I saw in your life as well. Yeah, and it also we had so many many studies that have shown that if you're physically active, you're physically healthy. It affects your mental state as well, your mindset as well. So it really does ripple out in every aspect of your life because you are healthy. You're you have a a good mental state, emotional state, and that's how you're going to show off in in terms of your relationship, in terms of your career or business or your Your your、um, relationship with other people around you, so it allows you to fully,、um, you know, step into that potential of yourself. Because hey, we are here in a physical plane, the physical world with this physical body. This is our vehicle. This is our vehicle from which we do everything. So if you don't care of, if you don't take care of this, how are you supposed to take care of everything else? Going on in your life, right? So, how do you feel right now that you're pursuing or you're actually doing the thing that you really love, and that is helping other people as a fitness coach or as a life coach? How how is it different compared to the feeling when you've had, of course, you've had a high paying job and was able to travel, but now it's more like helping other people. So, so how different it is. To you, in terms of the feeling that you're getting, super, super, super different. Like it's like on the other side of the spectrum.、Um, this has allowed me to become a better person, become a better daughter, a be-、uh, become a better partner, become a better friend, and it just opened up a possibility in this life that I wouldn't have thought. Is possible for me in my past life. Like, to be honest, before this relationship that I have, before my fiance, I was in a series of bad relationships, and I was like, why am I attracting all these men in my life, all these people in my life, and it's just so bad. And it's actually just a reflection of what's going on inside me. I'm in a job that is not, you know, that it isn't fulfilling. I'm in a very stressful environment. I'm in some abusive relationship, and it all has something to do with what's going on inside. Like all this turmoil in the outside world, actually turmoil in the inside world. What's going on inside? So when I started to shift that and really take care of myself, and like not full self care, like we see in social media, like. Lighting sage, lighting a candle, having bubble baths, or spending on some cruise or traveling or whatever—that's all good. But if you're, if that is your false safe self care, and you are doing that just to avoid confronting the real problems, then you do have a problem, right? So when I started to quit doing that and really address what's what's going on inside of me, so I took、um, therapy. I asked for help. I I hired a coach. I worked on myself. Start things start started to fall into place and started to work out for me. I have a good relationship. I, my relationship with my mom is like really really good now because in the past we have this love hate relationship, as mother and daughter, and it drives me crazy. But now because I have space, I'm not stressed at work. I'm not stressed in my relationship. I have space for myself. I was able to hold space for her as well. 
So I was able to grow that relationship. So I'm able to grow certain, not certain, but actually every aspect of my life just because I started to take care of myself in the real way, the real self-care uh, way. And uh, yeah, it's it's really completely different. I would say like 180% degree third of things for for me. And seeing my clients achieve a lot of things, like most of my clients, I'm a health coach and life coach, but most of my clients are quitting their job and moving on to, great, to other things, like building your own business or moving to a new country because they're finding alignment. They're finding that their current situation is not good for them anymore. It's not in alignment with what they want and that they're allowed to dream big. They, they're allowed to, to want more from this life, you know? Because when we were kids, we were always been told to get contented with what we want, right? So say you want more candies and your mom will just tell you, you had enough candies, you don't ask for more, you have privilege, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We are always told to minimize our desires, like to want less, that we feel guilty when we want more. So that's what I'm working with people, that it's okay to want more from this life if it's not making you happy. Right, so if there's no alignment, there's no fulfillment. It's okay to to want more. So, yeah, um, it's like a totally different life. And people who know me from five years ago, I don't think they recognize me now. Like they'll be like, "Who are you?" <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I was I was browsing at your photos. And I saw your photos, like from I don't know how many years, but that was uh, an old photo, and it's really different. I can say, <laughs> I can really see the difference uh, in a positive way but right now, like in terms of your aura and the radiance that you exude. So I, I can really see that it it really works for you, and I feel that you've got everything figured out <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very impressive to be honest so the thing is i don't have everything figured out so one thing that i also want to like discuss is so people are so scared of going through going for their dreams because they think that they can go for their dreams and have money right so i don't know if 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 you're familiar with this, but um, when I was a kid, I would hear like, when you go to music, you won't have money. There's no money in arts. There's no money in things like that. So you should be like in the sciences and do things like this. And we are so afraid to, to follow our dreams because of that. And I would say that at one point in 2019, I thought it was true because I was just new as a, a fitness uh, coach and I wasn't making money and I was just burning my savings living off my crypto earnings and I wasn't making money for a year and a half <laughs> and again things started to change for me when I shifted how I see money how I attract money in my life it started in October 2020 last year that I mm -hmm. started to shift my belief around money. So I can do what I want to do. I can go for go after my dreams and I can also be wealthy. True enough, within six months, I was able to create a seven-figure business. Like It was so crazy how just one belief could change your reality. And this is something that I talk about all the time in my in my channel on instagram because sometimes we just create stories in their in our life that things will not happen for us and we are finding excuses first rather than finding solutions to our problems i want to quit my job but then you have a list of excuses why you can't do it i want to build a business but you have all the list of excuses right so when you shift that into just finding opportunities i want to quit my job and then look at the opportunities that's available 
available for you, then things start to happen the way that you want. To. So just this shift of how you see things, what are the your beliefs around things, really start to change your life, right? So it's it's something that I also teach for fitness coaches who want to um build businesses online because i knew how hard it was because i've been there before i started earning seven digits in my business i was there so i wanted to create you know a community for coaches to just help them and this is this is not a you uh, know it's not a business it's just me giving back to the community sharing what i learned and just helping them shift their reality by shifting what they believe is true about themselves about money about anything actually so. that reminded me of the story from the book reach dad poor dad by robert kiyosaki where in the beginning they were trained by their rich dad the dad of his friend to work without salary and at first he was complaining, but then he it was explained to him by his rich daddy, and it's about training him how he look at money, like the value of money. So that was part of their training when they were young. So that kind of reminded me uh, of the story when you mentioned that. So you've mentioned that in October you had a shift in mindset that I can do this. Uh, meaningful activity at the same time earn money so what made you what, what made you ha have that mindset did you read something or did someone tell you like how did it come no I actually invested on a coach there you go so I took NLP training it's neuro linguistic programming it works with your subconscious mind it looks at your pattern your behavior and really helping you create new behaviors for yourself so everything that you do works for you so everything that we do on a daily basis 95 percent of it is subconscious it's pre-programmed it's it's pre-programmed from the day that we were born up to our childhood all these things that we have absorbed all this 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 beliefs about everything in life that we've heard from family we've read we've seen in media everything so sometimes we have all those frequency notions but it's holding us back so one of that notion is money is hard to earn or like when i go after my dreams i can't earn money or i have to work hard for money or when people when people are rich they must have like screwed someone over or something like that right so all these things have actually limited us so it, it's not just about money but everything in in, in life like also in relationship i'm not worthy or things like that so it has limited us with our potential so i took um i invested huge money like thousands of uh hundreds of thousands for the certification and for with working with a coach because i wanted to learn more about my patterns my own patterns and then i saw a lot of limiting beliefs in my life that is holding me back and when i started to shift all of that Things started to shift for me and and really everything starts from within all the success all the happiness everything amazing relationship it comes from from within and so as i always talk about in in in, in, in my platform i always say that what we need is not to find ourselves because it's it's Pretty common. Oh, I'm gonna travel because I want to find myself. I want to do this because I'm, I'm looking for myself. I'm finding myself. No, what you need is alignment. Alignment. What does it mean? It means that you have a purpose. Your your what you do, what you say, how you act, how you speak is in alignment with that first with that purpose. And that purpose is always always tied up to who you are, who you truly are. When, when, when you remove all the layers of negative beliefs and limiting decisions that has been imposed on you by maybe family, people around you, influences, media, whatever, when you start to strip all of that away, you will be left with your core, 
what is your core? What do you believe in? What is your values? Right? And then you start acting based on that and things will just fall into place. And I'm, I'm telling you, I was I was talking about it to my coach and I was telling her, you know, it can't be this easy. This, this works like magic. It does work like magic. <laughs> so it is also the same with what, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. So it's a really, really good book. And, and he talks about, you know, getting to your core and understanding your purpose so that you live that purpose every single every single moment of your life and things will just fall into place. That really shows us the importance of having a coach, you know, not just not just in fitness or in life, but in, in everything. Because a lot of us we have this mentality that oh I, I can go this figure I, I can figure this out without without someone. I can just read something from the internet or all the stuff, whether in sports, whether in public speaking, whether in dating, but then having a coach is really important. So if you can afford, uh, I think it's, it's really a good investment in everything that you do, like yeah. everything. But yeah, but you know, Regine, at the time that I hired my coach, I couldn't afford 500000 just to pay a coach, but I did. But I did. It was... I told my coach, you know what, when I decided I'm going to hire you, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to give her my money. No, it was like, oh, I'm going to take this money and invest on myself. And it was a huge investment. It was like, masakit siya na investment. Hindi siya, hindi siya basta basta. And what it does, based on psychology, is, is escalate your commitment. <laughs> You want to know where your priority is? Look at where your money is going. That's where your priority is. You say you want to build a job, but work a business, but where you, where is your money going? Expensive spa, expensive dinner, restaurant, you know, catching up with the Jonases, whatever. You want to know what your priorities are? Look where your money goes. What you invest on, you're committed to. So when you have huge investment, based on psychology, your commitment yeah. is also increasing, right? So I invested that amount of money. I was 100% all in. Like I showed up in yeah. our every meeting, every group session, you, every yeah. assignment. Every you don't have a choice. <laughs> right, because right. Because that's my investment. It's hard-earned money right. that I invested on myself. I didn't right. give it anyone. I invested it on myself. Usually that it's important to have a coach. Again, psychology, the Pygmalion effect. It means that when someone, a coach or a mentor, holds you up to a certain standards, you're more you're you're more likely to live up to that standard. That's what happened to me. Because I, I hired a wonderful coach and she saw potentials and also someone would be like me would give inputs objectively and she saw the potential that i didn't see myself and i started believing in myself because someone believed so much in me like you know what kai i was charging 500 dollars for my for not even 500 i think it was like less than 200 dollars for my monthly coaching yeah, less than $200. And she was like, you know what, guy? You can charge $5,000 for your coaching program. And I was like, being up. <laughs> like, I was like, I was so mind blown. Like, she saw that potential. And I lived up to this because, huh, this is possible. What the hell? I'm going to go after it. This is possible. And this is also why having influencers around us, like responsible influencers around us, is very important to show people that things are possible. Because when they see that it's possible, they're going to get more, 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 I don't know, courageous, more even braver to go after what they want because they know this is possible. And this is what's moved us, you know, what what moved us into progressing. Like since, you know, if you look back in history, like people trailblazing the way for us and seeing them that this can be done, 
right? And having a coach who holds you to that standard, to that potential, allows you to create more for your life. One of the big, one of the, one of the major advices of you know of of experts on how to live your life or how to be successful, how to be happy, how to be fulfilled, how to be the best version of yourself is to find your purpose. But the big question is, how do you find your purpose? Okay, so I do have a signature way of finding out purpose inside my my signature program, but basically it's really going back to who you are, to what you want, what you believe. And really disregarding other noise outside. Because sometimes I I personally I started to work in corporate because I thought corporate is the way to success. But before that I was blogging. I love blogging. And I was making like six digits per month from my blogs. I was what 18 and I was earning six digits. But I left that and I went to corporate paying me 80% less of what I'm doing what I'm doing when I was blogging, right? And it was because of the voices, the expectations that I have to work. Like, oh, you finished home site, tapos you're not, you're just sitting all day in your computer, you're not working. Why are you wasting your life? Things like that. So if I just didn't listen to that voice and it just followed through what I want at the time, I just wanted to write, I, I, I wonder how big that media company would have been if I didn't give up on it. Because people told me there's just one way to success because I believe them, right? So see, it's you taking a bet on yourself, believing in yourself and what you really want to do. Sometimes people know. Most of the times, people know. They're just scared. There are just fears of what people would say, of how my life would be, of how much money I would make. Like if you remove all of that, you would know. You would know exactly what it is that you want. So it doesn't matter whether you're in corporate, whatever your job is, as long as you believe that that is your purpose. It doesn't have to be entrepreneurship or, or quitting your job right am i correct that you can be a nurse and you think that is your purpose and it will be a meaningful pursuit it doesn't have to be always quitting your job and be a businessman or a ceo right yeah. it's not it's, yeah not always about quitting your job it's really finding purpose in what you do and that would set you up for life set you up for success great great and now we live in a world where there are lots of issues. So what do you think are the main reasons why people don't achieve the best version of themselves? What are they doing wrong? What are they doing that is so wrong that needs to be stopped immediately? What do you think? Like ma majority of people, do you have any idea? Um, I, I'm not sure if this is correct, but I think it is the fear. It's the fear for for the future and also regrets from the past so mm -hmm. when you when you are worrying or when you are guilty or feeling negative emotions you are anchoring yourself in either the future or the past you're not living in the present because the present moment when you really tune into it there is nothing in the present moment but pure joy and happiness and high vibe. But you know what, guy? I'm worried about the future. What if I lose my job if I get sick? But that's the future. You're living in the future, worrying about the future. But you know what? I've done this in the past and it didn't work out. And I'm so scared. I get my heart broken or I don't have things will not happen for me. Whatever. That's in the past. You're living in the past. So unless you really live in the now and the, this present moment you don't think about what's happened you let go of what's happened and you're not so worried about the future yeah i think that's what's missing for for most of the people and also when we do think about the past and the future 
we actually consider the past more than the future. When we think about our future self and our past self, we don't have empathy to our future self because this is a person we haven't met yet. The past version of us, we've met that, we've lived that life. So this, we, um, this has been studied in psychology as well. Like people treat their future self as strangers. Mm -hmm. So you are not acting at the present moment at the best interest for of your future self because that's a stranger. <laughs> that's a stranger. And they created a study of, you know, introducing the future self. To, so they asked the participants to really visualize their future selves. And what they found out is that when they create a future self, like a persona, who this future person would be, they started to get empathy for this future person their future version of themselves and then they started to act to act considering that future version in favor of that future version because now you are considering this future outcome but it's not coming from a place of worry oh what's going to happen it's not coming from that but it's coming from a place of abundance of what is possible for this person Mm. Because right. so because it's like creating someone that hasn't happened yet, but you have a control of what's going to happen by what you do now. For example, in terms of fitness, maybe I can imagine that I'm a, a very fit individual or a muscular individual in like five years from now, something like that. Is that it? Yeah. So if I can imagine myself as a really fit person, who's strong and running races and I have abs and I'm attracting a lot of, uh, you know, good relationships around me you will now become excited to act now because you know that future what you do now is what's going to give you that future right so wow it's it was really a very meaningful conversation and i didn't realize one hour <laughs> have passed <laughs> uh, i know <laughs> Well, a lot of lessons from you, Kai. Thank you so much for your time. It's it's really a no. It's like it's like we didn't waste any word. Like in this conversation, everything is so important. It's, it's really amazing. But then before we end, just one last question because we're suffering from COVID nineteen health issues, immune system issues, and you've mentioned gut health, the importance of gut health. Can you just summarize it a bit for our listeners? The importance of taking care of your gut health. In relation to your immune system just just in a nutshell yeah okay so our immune system we are always told oh uh, improve your immune system take care of yourself or whatever but 80 percent of your immune cells are in your gut in your gut right the, your gut is your digestive tract and we have bacteria a microbiome a forest of bacteria but i would say in your bacteria that's going to digest your food, help you digest your food and everything. We have bad bacteria and good bacteria. So if we have bad bacteria in our in our gut, that is going to compromise our immune health. So if we are eating highly processed food, added sugar and things like that, junk food, you are fueling, you are like populating the bad bacteria in your gut so you're not digesting your food properly plus it um what do you call this it compromises your lining your intestinal lining and when it happens it means that food and toxin can go through your um your gut can go through your intestines and we can be into your bloodstream in your body right so this is how we get sick and our gut is actually the 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 entrance, uh, our portal from the outside world to the inner world, and it protects right. us. So yeah, um, so many studies have shown around COVID that we need to really improve our immune system, get vitamin D from the sun, and eat healthy food. So and get vaccinated, and you know, so to really give us a fighting chance if we ever get COVID, if we ever contract the virus. It's really nice talking to a life and fitness coach. And we are so fortunate for you to be able to share your knowledge and experience to us. Kai, thank you once again for being on the podcast. So do you have 
how about those people who want to contact you, you know, for your program? How can they contact you? Okay, so I'm always on Instagram at Kai Abbas on Instagram. So if you're interested to work together, if you're looking at improving your life, if you're so done with with what how your life is right now, um, my up level program is my signature program of helping people build healthier patterns so yeah they can live the best life and you decide what's your best life it's 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 up to you it's up to you. all right thank you and before we end i'm gonna leave you with this travel quote because in the end you won't remember the time you spent working in an office or mowing your lawn climb that damn mountain by jack kerouac thank you guys for tuning in this has been your host reggie and reno till the next episode